Hey everyone, Kitana here and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome to my astro community. And in today's video, I'm going to be talking about your soulmate. And specifically, I'm going to be talking about how you can look in your birth chart to understand who your soulmate is, what characteristics they'll have, and what traits they have. And if you haven't met your soulmate yet, um, in this video you will find out what to look for and like I said, what characteristics will have. And if you have met your soulmate, then you can, can understand if these traits align with your birth chart. And by the end of this video you will understand the energy your soulmate has so if you're new here i'd love to have you a part of my astro community go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you want your own personal reading go to my website theastrokit.com okay so in today's video i'm going to be talking about juno so if you guys don't know already, in astrology, in Western astrology, there is this asteroid called Juno. I'll put a picture of it on the screen. Now Juno isn't an actual planet. It isn't, it isn't like an actual star or anything. It's just a asteroid, a point in the sky. But Juno is so important because Juno shows us who our soulmate is. And then if you guys don't know how to look for Juno in your chart yet, um, I'll put like a screen recording on the screen of how to figure out on astro.com. But basically I'll put the symbol on the screen it's like, it's like this little symbol and wherever it is in your chart like I said really indicates who your soulmate is and what traits they have and really how I would describe Juno is that um, a lot of times in life we like go after certain people we want right um, and that can be seen kind of like with our seventh house maybe our Mars sign it's kind of like how we pursue others and kind of the people we naturally attract especially with seventh house that really shows us who we naturally already just interact with <laughs> But Juno is so important because it just shows us what we need. It shows us the partner that will really complement us well at the end of the day. The partner that will really support us and really kind of be our soulmate, be the person we're, you know, destined to be with. And so what I always tell people is like, like I said, it's not necessarily the person you want, but it's the person you need. So sometimes with Juno, you can have Juno in a sign. Like, let's say you have Juno in Scorpio and you're like, I've never dated a Scorpio. I don't even check for Scorpios like that, but maybe a Scorpio is the type of person you need. <laughs> so given that, like I said, we can look at the sign of Juno. Um, it's not super literal where it's like, if you have Aries Juno, then you're, you know, then your soulmate's an Aries. It's more so like maybe they have Aries placements or maybe they have um, an Aries rising or Aries moon. It's not necessarily like, okay, my partners and Aries that I'm supposed to be with. Um, it's more so like they have Aries energy. Um, and I feel like that's really helpful because you can kind of look at the sign and be like, okay, I need someone with Taurus energy. I need someone with Aries energy or whatever sign you have um, your Juno in. Okay, so I'm going to touch on each sign um, really quickly. I'm not going to go too in depth. I just want to give you guys like a like idea. So first things first, of course, with Aries Juno, you need someone who's bold. You need someone who will motivate you. Um, this manifests as someone like maybe you really need a masculine partner, um, someone that is really unapologetic, someone that is really fearless and bold. And especially if you if you have um, Juno in the first house, that can, this can manifest the same way. So yeah, this is for Aries Juno, Aries in the first house. You need someone who is bold, someone who will motivate you, and someone who is confident, someone who is, you know, ambitious. That will really complement you very well. And your soulmate might end up being an Aries or Aries influenced person. Okay, so let's talk about Taurus, Taurus Juno or Juno and Taurus. Um, of course, I kind of touched on this with my earlier example, but with Juno and Taurus, you need somebody who is stable, somebody who is grounded. Um, you need someone who will really um, be reliable for you. And this might manifest too with Juno in the second house, a similar way, um, where you need someone who you can depend on, someone who is financially stable, somebody who can maybe even financially support you. Um, that will be your soulmate. That will be someone who will definitely be a long-term relationship for you. Okay, so let's talk about Gemini Juno or Juno Gemini, or if you have Juno in the third house. This really indicates to me your soulmate will be someone or you need someone um, who is very communicative with you. You need someone who is playful with you. You need someone who is very sociable with you. Um, I think your soulmate will be someone who is very lighthearted, somebody who is very playful, like I said. Someone who is very curious and they just wanna like banter with you. Um, this isn't a super like serious and intense like twin flame type of sign to me. I feel like Juno and Gemini is a very playful type of soulmate. Somebody who, like I said, you can chat with and you know, but who will really mentally stimulate you. I think you need someone who isn't, you know, purely romantic or purely platonic. You need someone with that's like in between, someone who can kind of be your friend and lover at the same time. 
Okay, so let's talk about um, Cancer Juno or um, maybe even Juno in the fourth house. So with Cancer Juno, you definitely need someone um, who is nurturing. Your soulmate will be somebody who really nurtures your soul, nurtures your intuition, nurtures your um, soft side, your feminine side, because that's what Cancer is all about. And I feel like with Cancer Juno, you definitely want someone who encourages uh, your softer side, someone who encourages you and supports you and offers that really like nurturing energy if they're not a cancer then they'll probably have some cancer energy have moon energy somewhere maybe you have moon synastry with them but overall your soulmate or person you'll be with is somebody who's very nurturing and then for leo juno or if you have juno in the fifth house um you might need somebody who is very generous with you you might need someone who will show you off leo energy is very loyal as well i think you need a soulmate who is very loyal to you somebody that adores you somebody that is like the apple of your eye and you're the apple of their eye um this is like a very romantic type of energy to me so you definitely need somebody who is romantic who's playful who's loyal and your soulmate might embody like that energy they might embody leo energy they might literally be like a leo or like a fifth house person but you definitely need like that romance in your life you need that loyalty in your life and again, this is kind of similar to Gemini energy where it's like, you definitely need someone who is playful too. I think Leo energy is very playful, although it is very loyal and monogamous. Um, I think it's very playful too. So you definitely need that element when it comes to soulmates or dating someone seriously. Um, and even if you do know your soulmate already, they probably have maybe some Leo energy. Okay, so let's talk about Virgo Juno or Juno in the sixth house. Okay, so with Virgo Juno, you're definitely somebody who needs... Um, to me, this might manifest as like you need a soulmate who will hold you accountable. You need a very productive type of partner, if that makes sense. Um, like to me, this isn't just a partner who is purely romantic or super like lovey-dovey. It's an actual like functioning relationship. It's a soulmate who can like work with your energy, um, can almost, I feel like it almost can feel like a team even. Comment down below if you have a soulmate um, and they are and you have Virgo and Juno. Do they have like Virgo qualities? Um, but to me, this really manifests as you needing someone or a soulmate um, or your soulmate will be someone who is very productive with you. Um, just very productive energy in general. Um, someone who was also doesn't mind being of service to you. Somebody who is very generous with their acts of service with you. Um, somebody who really knows your knows the details about you and really knows how to, you know, nurture you or knows how to encourage you based on the smaller details of your personality. Okay, so let's talk about Libra Juno or if you have uh, Juno in the seventh house. So with Juno and Libra, of course, you need somebody who's very balanced. Um, if you have a soulmate or when you meet your soulmates or a long-term person you want to be with, um, balance is going to be a theme for you. Balance um, between the two of you, a balanced personality. You just need somebody who almost neutralizes you um you need somebody who can always suggest like the fair side or the fair option um especially if you're somebody who can be like stubborn or one-sided or, or even biased about stuff you need someone who will offset that you need someone who will be like okay here's the balanced side of this or here's the just side of this um you need somebody who is charming and graceful um someone with libra energy overall will compliment you really well because libra energy is very graceful it's very fair it's very peace-minded it's very balanced so you definitely need somebody who is very balanced if they're not literally a libra um they have this libra energy maybe they have seventh house energy um venus energy um you just need someone who's very pleasant um and then also with Libra energy, it's very romantic energy. It's also very flirty energy. So you need someone who you can flirt with, someone who can feel playful with, someone who you can really feel playful with. Um, it's not a very super serious like sign to have for Juno. I think it's a very playful energy too. And then for Juno and Scorpio, um, I touched on this earlier, but you definitely need someone who is very intense. With this Juno sign, especially if you, if you have Juno in the eighth house, um, you need somebody who is intense, somebody that's very passionate about you, somebody who um you can have a soul connection with this is not a superficial juno sign at all i feel like you if you have a soulmate right now they might have some scorpio energy pluto energy um maybe even some like very distinct eighth house energy either way you need someone who will transform you too like i feel like this can be a challenging juno just because you might i don't know you might be in accidentally like toxic relationships because sometimes with um, Scorpio energy it's all about transformation but transformation isn't always pleasant so you might be in relationships that are kind of toxic but they do teach you a huge lesson so this is one of those Junos like I said it might be 
a little bit like you might go through some really challenging relationships at first but ultimately it teaches you um these lessons so that when you find your true soulmate it's a very intense very passionate connection that is you know full of trust and loyalty okay so let's talk about juno in sagittarius so juno in sagittarius you need someone or a soulmate who uh, really encourages freedom somebody who um even if it like you know it is monogamous, but I feel like with Juno and Sag, or even like um, having your Juno in the ninth house, you're somebody who needs this element of freedom in your relationship. So therefore, you will attract a partner or soulmate who um, is very much about this freedom and, and creates a relationship with you that feels very freeing for them or feels very like not stagnant i think this is a relationship that's very playful as well a relationship that is very spontaneous a relationship that is very adventurous something where you guys can learn a lot from each other i feel like juno and sag you might have a, a soulmate or partner where you just learn a lot for them from them or um they have a lot of wisdom to give or like i said they're very adventurous or they just love teaching you things um that kind of person like sag energy will really complement you well okay so let's talk about um juno and capricorn or if you have juno in the 10th house so juno and capricorn of course this manifests to me as you needing a person or soulmate who is very responsible you need somebody who is very dependable you need someone who is very focused and capricorn energy will give you that capricorn energy will really complement you well because they will give you that stability that financial security um they will give you kind of like almost like this example of like responsibility to really uh, to really admire or be in a relationship and this really manifests as cap energy complementing you well because like i said um you really need this element of hard work and your maybe in your soulmate connection um and that might be a theme with soulmates you have or the soulmate you will have it's just like the sense of hard work building something to last building something that will you know be a legacy i think cap energy is all about legacy so you might be with someone you marry and then you leave a huge legacy to your kids or something like that and this is definitely one that's not super whimsical i know i mentioned some of the other juno signs are very like playful and whimsical but this one is kind of has a serious energy to it so you might attract a partner who's very serious who is very you know like i said they're very goal oriented and ambitious they don't have time for games um they're very loyal and secure in themselves and that's the kind of person that will compliment you very well okay so let's talk about juno in aquarius or if you have juno in the 11th house so aquarius juno um to me this manifests as you needing a soulmate or having a soulmate who is very unique somebody who is very somebody that feels like a friend like somebody that feels like very platonic even though if you are romantic you're still very platonic like you're still very like friendly like they feel like your home girl or you feel like your homeboy or whatever um and that's a very important element of your relationship with your soulmate is being friends first like having this foundation of friendship with your significant other and of course having this element of freedom as well i think this is kind of similar to like sag you know where it's like you don't want it to feel too confined you still want to be individuals you still want to be unique by yourselves but you want you want to be unique together um i don't know if that makes sense but yeah like you want to be individuals and unique but you still want to be together um and you're really bonded by this sense of friendship and someone with aquarius energy that is very unique very inventive innovative someone that is very creative will suit you and compliment you really well okay so let's talk about juno in pisces or if you have juno in the 12th house so right away with Juno and Pisces, um, this to me suggests a soulmate or a life partner who is very um, spiritually connected to you. I definitely sense that you need somebody who, you know, who is understands your deep emotions, understands your spiritual side. I think Pisces energy is very spiritual, right? And the 12th house is a very spiritual energy. Um, and I especially feel like your soulmate will be a karmic soulmate. Um, I think like your soulmate can be somebody who you had a past life with either way your sinistry your sinistry might be very compelling to where it's like oh you have like each other's north node in like your 12th house or something where it's like you have a very karmic connection to them and with this karmic energy um sometimes that can be challenging i think pisces juno can be a challenging one to have just because like maybe you attract people who are you know mm, maybe they try to like the relationship is meant to teach you a lesson but sometimes you think it's true love so you might be in these relationships where it's like you confuse love for lessons and 
it can be a challenge, but overall at the end of the day, um, your soulmate is somebody who is very spiritual because that will complement you quite well. And ultimately the energy that complements you the best is energy that is, like I said, very intuitive, very in tune with your, you know, your subtle emotions, somebody who is very compassionate about you. And this can also suggest a partner who is maybe even kind of sensitive or somebody who um, even just like energetically sensitive, somebody who, if we think about Pisces energy, they're kind of sensitive, they're kind of um, like, they're kind of like that energy that needs like somebody to protect them. So maybe you're the person who needs to protect them or you're the person to encourage them or encourage their creativity. Um, oh yeah, they might even attract people who are very creative, um, maybe even musical. Either way, your soulmate might be a, literally a Pisces or somebody who has this Pisces energy because overall Pisces energy is what complements your energy. 